Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Crypto brought to you by BitGet. Here you'll hear from the founders, the builders, investors, traders as we discuss all things crypto in 5 minutes. In today's episode of the podcast, we are talking about redefining the future of finance. And our special guest is Mark Mumford. Mark is the co-founder and director of Not Centralized, a Web3 and AI venture studio. He's also the president of the Data Science and AI Association of Australia and the president of Australian DeFi Association. Oz DeFi is a non-for-profit community organization focused on providing educational materials and news updates from the world of blockchain, DeFi, Web3, and like us, what we're talking today, all things crypto. So welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me, Debbie. Great to be here. But let's get started because we want to talk all things DeFi. Mm -hmm. And so we'll start with like a really, really broad and easy question. What is DeFi and how does it work in your world? Just that in a very simple kind of way of thinking about it, apart from the what it stands for, decentralized finance, a very simple way to think about it is what is that future of commerce? And so typically when people look at DeFi, all they think about is that this is just staking and getting investment and yield. And I believe that if we go back to the roots of blockchain technology and the cryptocurrency or sorry, the cryptography that this sits all on top of. For me, DeFi is that future of commerce. It's decentralized commerce and there's advantages to having something decentralized. Um, a lot of people don't really worry about it until bad things happen. So Optus, Medibank, Services New South Wales, other hacks that have happened to data um, and to the, to the places and the servers where they sit essentially blockchain solves a lot of that and it's not just for security because that's to help us avoid the hack that it's all not just in one place but by having something distributed um dlt is a common term in this space but distributed ledger technology whether it's a blockchain but whatever kind of distributed ledger technology that you're sitting on there's ways to use it not just from a security perspective but because of the very low cost of being able to do things and the open source software that is built on top of these internet machines as ethereum is often put by being able to do these things we can actually create a future of commerce that is very different and much more open and available to people let's break it down and say give me some examples of the use cases that you think or feel are disrupting traditional finance right now and that we will want to adopt? Some of the ones that I'm directly involved in and some of the ones that we just see that are out there, they're the type that are traditionally disrupting industries within finance and just commerce in general. So one of the first things that I heard about was uh, insurance and having a decentralized way of providing insurance or even one of the first projects that we looked at was around um, the trade of uh, foreign exchange and just how typically Forex brokers, the way that they work, there's a management kind of structure that takes a lot of the fees and there's not as much distributed to um, the people that are actually using a protocol and even research firms. So for example, in the world of um, traditional equities and ETFs, there are research investment firms. And one of the things that we had initially seen was that there's possibilities for companies that are, they, they don't have to be fully decentralized in the way that they do things. You can create new things within uh, an existing company to not cannibalize on existing revenue. So imagine that a company that is um, doing surveys and they're doing those only once a year because that's the resources they can afford to do. Well, they can create tokens um, through decentralized finance means and smart contract. They can create tokens where Those tokens are given out to uh, potential users to increase the number of surveys, to increase the cadence of the surveys that they fill in. And as the company makes more money from those uh, extra surveys, that money from that data revenue that is distributed to those users. So these were some of the initial kind of concepts that we found when we were getting into the space. And then as we saw what smart contracts were about, we're also looking at uh, bank guarantees as well. So there's quite a few different use cases, but if you think about anything that is manual, um, that needs this uh, way of doing things in, in a better way, like a really good example, and it's unique because we're here in Australia. Australia has something called PEXA. PEXA is Property Exchange Australia, and they're not on blockchain. 
but they're a good example because if you think about going from a world of manual where we had conveyancing, we, it wasn't electronic for many um, uh, states prior to 2020. And when COVID hit, there was this need to do a lot of digital stuff. If we had people that were looking at blockchain as a way of doing that, I think it would be a better version than what PEXA is currently doing. Those are some of the ones that we had seen there. There's plenty more. People are trying to do stuff with real estate. People are trying to do stuff with um, other forms of loans or remittance. So a lot of the key themes coming out, supporting speed, reducing costs, increasing frequency, yeah. particularly with longitudinal studies in the research. Um, they all sound great. And, but I can see that some of these things are going to take a long time to build because mm -hmm. of the traditional businesses that we're working with. So how will smart contracts mm -hmm. help define or redefine the future of money? This concept of smart contracts, which are really in a way dumb, they're not smart at all. They are they're waiting for us as people and maybe even AI tools out there later on to program them with the rules of what they're meant to do. Um, you can imagine that in the escrow, uh, the digital escrow uh, facility that we created, instead of having to have um, a whole heap of people manage escrows as the project uh, travels along, we can create rules in the smart contract that define how payments are meant to be made and put controls in there so that if someone, if a trader is doing a job um, for a builder, that the builder is able to put up escrows uh, into a smart contract that cannot be touched. The builder can see that money is there. It's safe because that money is only to go to them if they complete their work. And it's also safe from the, um, the builder's perspective because they might have a tradie that doesn't do quality work, for example, and instead of that money just being sent across, there has to be approvals. We actually spoke to groups that are tradies that are facing problems around delays of payments and security of payments. We work with them to actually deliver on a real life job of a commercial building retiling um, in Queensland. And that was part of a project that we did with the RBA. So the RBA had the test of a pilot um, for the electronic Australian dollar. And as part of that, um, we had a programmable stable coin sitting on top of the CBDC. CBDC was used as proof of reserve. Um, and what we saw there was the smart contracts were able to drive all of this. And then finally, as we were doing this work, we saw that there's a need, like blockchains are great, but unfortunately they provide um, too much transparency. What I mean by that is that <laughs> commercial deals, as soon as we have done a transaction between say you and I, Debbie, it should not mean that you can see my wallet and all of my history of transactions or my future, you know, um, my future transactions. That's by its very nature, just part and parcel of blockchain. But what we were able to do with zero knowledge proofs, we created something that was uh, Z ZK proof, EVM compatible so that people can use it for whatever Ethereum based this kind of protocol or anything written in Solidity. Um, but we put that as part of this. So we had the best of Web3 with programmability and that provided the escrow and security payments, but so that people could use this going forward and be protected with their commercial confidentiality, we had the ZK um, proofs on top of that. Smart contracts are massively gonna redefine how we do commerce. So many interesting projects, Mark. How I can know. everyone, um learn more about what you're doing where can they find out more they can come see the things that we're doing at uh, www.notcentralized.com and that's centralized with an s so um we you know named the company that way because we believe in the power of decentralized technologies or just by coming along to the meetups where all of this kind of stuff is really shared about what people are building at the aussie High association Great. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks for joining us on Big Get's 5-Minute Crypto. Um, for all of our listeners out there, if you do want to learn more about what is DeFi, please visit us on biggetcom forward slash academy. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.